up to the great white throne judgment at the end of the thousand year millennium and then be cast into the lake of fire. That's real wrath. But that wrath is, they're treasuring that wrath up by the life that they live in this life. Treasure not by myself wrath against the day of wrath, this day of wrath, I believe the real day of wrath is going to be when, when God throws them in the lake of fire. And revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Well, they're going to get a pretty good revelation when they plunge into hell. That's what that's in reference to, revelation. They're going to, they're going to have their eyes opened. Not only in hell, but at the great white throne judgment. They're going to, they're going to, their eyes are going to be totally open. It's going to be revealed. Revelation revealed unto them. They're going to understand then the righteous judgment of God. Then they're going to understand it. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. Now this isn't the great white throne judgment. He'll render to every man according to his deeds. Think about this. If you want to try to get to heaven by your own good works, God will let you have it that way. He'll let you, he'll let you have your deeds and your works. He'll, he'll, he's going to render to you according to your deeds. If you want it that way, God will give it to you. He'll give it to you. At the great white throne judgment, He'll give it to you. You wanted to have it your way? You wanted to work your way into heaven? I'll render to you according to your deeds. I don't want to be rendered according to my works on where I spend eternity. Because I will burn in hell forever. I'm talking about me, Scott Johnson. I will burn in hell for eternity if I go to God based on that basis. I'm not holding them to any, any higher accountability than I would personally hold myself. I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be through grace, through faith in Jesus Christ, not of works, lest any man should boast. I don't want my entrance into heaven to be based on any work or whatever that I have done. I want it to be based on faith in Jesus Christ. His shed blood. His atonement on the cross. His death, burial, and resurrection. My faith in Him. My childlike faith in Him. As a little baby, God, I cannot do this. I cannot save myself. I am nothing apart from you, nor do I desire to be anything apart from you. I tell that to the Lord, and I mean it. I mean it. I don't want to be anything apart from Him. Because I know the moment I think I am something apart from Him, I am nothing. The Bible says that. He said in John 15, it says, you can do nothing apart from me. You have to abide in the, in, in the vine as a branch. You have to abide in the vine. The vine is Jesus Christ. You, as a branch grafted in, we have to abide in the vine. One of the main ways you abide in the vine is by abiding in the Word of God. Because He is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning was God. All things were made by Him, and without, not, and without Him was not anything made that was made. That's John chapter 1. All things were made by Him. So, um, it says, Who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So now, granted, this is works following salvation. And this is talking about different categories. These are talking about the saved. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing See, well-doing is just going to be a natural byproduct of being saved. Period. It's not faith. It's not works though before faith. They seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, what are they truly contentious toward? I can be contentious towards toward an unsaved person and arguing the gospel of Christ. Does that make me contentious? Well, contentious defending the Word of God, I don't think that's the kind of contentious they're in reference to here. Because we are supposed to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. That's Jude. So, 
but unto them that are contentious. What are they contentious about? I, I believe it's... Um, they're contentious about the Word of God. They're contentious about saying, I want it in my way. And... I want God on my terms and I'm going to heaven and there's no hell and there's no sin and I can do whatever I want. They're contending with the word of God is really what they're really their argument is with the word of God. If you get into a biblical argument about something and you're and you're biblically correct in what you're saying, if you really think about it, the argument of the person coming against you isn't so much with you as it is with the word of God. And that's something you can bring up to them. To kind of take the spotlight, because they'll always try to put the spotlight on you. Oh, you do-gooder, you self-righteous, sanctimonious, whatever. Stop the conversation. No, no, no. Sorry. Your, your, your argument really isn't with me. It's really with the Word of God. Because this is what the Word of God says. And if you want me to show it to you, I can prove it to you. Now, if you have the, if you have the verses memorized, you can just quote it to them. I wish I had more Scripture memorized, but... These are things that, that um, why the, where the Bible says always being able to give uh, an answer for the hope that is within you. These are, that falls under that classification. So, <clears throat> these are things that we can do, and, and there's a time that you are contentious. There is. There's a time that you are contentious. When it comes to the Word of God, I say it's fine to be contentious. You know? Um, but if it's contentious where you're just trying to get your own agenda, these types of things, that's not good. Um, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. Now, now here we, we know right here, because see, the Bible will define itself. You say, well, contentious? Well, I got in an argument about the Bible yesterday. Hmm. Am, am I contentious? Well, hold on. Didn't Jesus argue with the Pharisees and Sadducees? Didn't, didn't he always argue with the... Every time he got around anybody so-called religious, those are the ones he had the biggest problems with. Those are the ones he called serpents and vipers. He didn't even call the heathens and, and, the, and the taxpayers and all the other... the whores and the prostitutes and all this other stuff. He didn't have near as much of a problem with them. He didn't go around calling them serpents and vipers. He only called the religious. Because that's the chief tool of Satan to take people to hell. Religion. Think about that. Selah. Sorry. Anyway. Um, so it says that, that um, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. Well, the Bible says, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, in that verse, what is implied is truth. The word of God. That is truth. That truth shall make you free. Well, it says, Unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. Well, these are people that aren't obeying the Bible. The Word. But obey unrighteousness. Obviously, not, we're not talking about the Bible if they're obeying unrighteousness. Indignation and wrath. Tribulation and anguish. Upon every soul of man that doeth evil... Of the Jew first and also the Gentile. He came to the Jew first. Here we go again. And then the Gentile. The emphasis got shifted to the Gentile. That works against them too. The Jew. Because they're the ones that get hammered hardest. Because they're first in line. <laughs> so that whole Jew first, Gentile second thing can work against the Jew too. If they're, if they're in unrighteousness. The Bible says that Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. He came to the Jew first, but his own received him not. Let's face it, Jesus was in the lineage of the Jew. Just look at Matthew chapter 1, the lineage of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. So see, good works should be following. Problem is, is you've got some very morally upright people that are out there that maybe really were brought up in a very morally upright house. And of course, that's getting less and less in today's day and age. I'm talking more and more elderly people. My grandpa was a...